Hey, I'm Tanner. And I'm Allie. And we're the Kalinas. And today we want to talk to you about how your wedding can actually be one of the best opportunities for your wedding guests to encounter our Lord. Because if you think about it, your wedding might be one of the only times that your wedding guests ever think to step into a church. So today we're going to talk about a few things that we did to try to help facilitate that encounter with God's love. So we kind of started right from the get-go. Um, we tried to make all of our save the dates, our wedding invitations, kind of reflect a little bit of the joy of the Lord that we've encountered. So on the back of our save the date, we have a beautiful JP2 quote, St. John Paul II quote, and it says, man cannot fully find himself except through a sincere gift of himself. So that was just kind of like a little inkling towards that. And we did the same thing on our um, wedding invitations. And then for our actual wedding program, this little guy, we went ahead and like, we kind of just walked through the gospel. So if you flip through this, just like really easy, it's a page turner. It's kind of thick, but it's a page turner, really fun before you actually get to like the wedding program part. But we walked people through the gospel because it might be one of the only times they ever have a chance to really hear the gospel presented to them. And then we walked them through the mass. So we told them like, why we say the Nicene Creed? What are the prayers of the faithful? We just kind of walk them through the Mass so as they're in the pews, they can read along and kind of understand what's happening in front of them. Tanner started this um, the day after we got engaged. <laughs> I mean, so... this, this was one of the things I was most excited about. <laughs> and honestly, we got a lot of really good feedback on it. So many people asked if they could keep them because it really is just like a little story um, about how God wants to meet each of us in this life. So it's beautiful. Then for the actual wedding weekend, the night of our rehearsal, we had a holy hour. So an hour of adoration for all of our bridal party and for our, some of our family and friends. And during that hour of adoration, we had Father Peter, who was our priest for our wedding, um, kind of get up in front of everybody and tell them the importance of going to confession. So he heard confessions throughout that whole hour. And it was really beautiful. I think basically everybody went to confession, um, everyone who was a practicing Catholic. And it was just a really awesome opportunity to spend some time in prayer with our family and our friends uh, the night before we got married. Yeah, we had family and friends who hadn't been to confession in two decades yeah, go for the first time. It was just awesome. Yeah, and really beautiful. It was the church that I grew up going to, even though I wasn't Catholic. It was the church that was attached to the school I went to. And so I got to sit by my little sister and pray in adoration together with her the year before she became Catholic. So it was mm -hmm. a huge gift. And some of our bridal party wasn't Catholic, but we still invited them to this holy hour. And it was probably the first time they've ever sat in front of our Eucharistic Lord. It was really beautiful, too, because... I converted to Catholicism when I was in college, and I actually remember my first time in adoration. It leaves a really big impact on people, so it was really exciting that we got to kind of bring them into that. Yeah, in John 12, 32, Jesus says, when I have been lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. And so literally just getting people in front of Jesus in the Eucharist, he can do his thing, and you can kind of sit back and mm -hmm. just intercede for them. And along those same lines, Father Peter, one of our best friends, the man, we told Father Peter beforehand, a little bit about our audience who would be in the pews and we told them to just to go hard when he was preaching to like really preach and to just share the gospel in a really beautiful way and he did it was yeah, awesome it was awesome he, he made people laugh he was his full self and and people walked away being like wow i, I didn't know a priest could know people that well and i didn't know that a priest could be that funny and that approachable <laughs> so talk with your priest beforehand let them know about who's going to be in your pews and and let them no, you know, go for it. Also, during our wedding, we thought it was really important. Actually, before our wedding and then during our wedding, we decided to kind of renew our consecration to Mary. We had both done that um, individually before, but we wanted to do it together. So then at our actual wedding ceremony, we had a moment where we consecrated our marriage to Mary. So we brought a bouquet of red roses um, to Mary, like the statue, and we asked for her intercession and we prayed together. And it was just a really beautiful opportunity for just everybody who came to our wedding to realize like our wedding was not about us. It's not about us. It's about um, us getting to heaven. And so like for them to be able to see us uh, praying together during the actual ceremony was really, really cool. Yeah. And again, for our friends and family who weren't Catholic, it was a chance for them to see that we trust Mother Mary's intercession mm -hmm. on behalf of our marriage. Yeah, and to just get like wheels turning about that because being Protestant growing up, that's just not something we talk about a lot. So just planting little seeds to be like, hmm, what was that all about? Yeah, but we try to plant seeds everywhere. Mm -hmm. So after our wedding ceremony, um, at, at our reception, we just kind of threw little Catholic touches everywhere we could. For example, uh, we had our tables organized by a saint 
So people would come up and look on the seating chart and be like, oh, I'm at the St. Therese of Lisieux table. <laughs> And then at the table, we had like a little story, a little write up about each of the saints. Yeah, we tried to make each table, their saint kind of reflect something that unified the group of the people that were at that table. And so I'll give one example. Uh, I grew up figure skating and we had a bunch of my old coaches and friends and they all sat at the same table. And so we picked St. Lidwina to be their, pa their patron saint of their table because she's the patron saint of figure skaters. So when they're at their table, they could read a short story about St. Lidwina and like it was related to all of them. Them, which is really cool. Yeah. And like for my focus team and all, all my students who were being focus missionaries the following year, we had St. Francis Xavier. Yeah. Who's a patron of focus. Yeah, exactly. So we just had like little touches for each person there. Which was really fun. And Tanner wrote all the little stories. It was yeah, awesome. It was very fun. And at each table, we kind of, this sounds a little weird, but we don't mean for it to sound weird. We, we strategically placed people that we knew weren't Catholic or, um, knew like weren't practicing their faith, we strategically placed people who are on fire for their faith to sit with them. Just to spark conversations and, and to show people an authentic witness of, of just good Catholic people. But most importantly, when it comes to your wedding and your guests that will be attending is to show your joy and love for one another and for the Lord and also for them. <laughs> be really intentional about the ways that you're caring for your guests at your wedding because it will directly reflect like your love for the Lord too. Yeah, and especially when it comes to the Eucharist, let them see your deep love and reverence for our Eucharistic Lord. St. Maximilian Kolbe said, be a Catholic. When you kneel before the altar, kneel in a way that other people may be able to recognize that you know before whom you kneel. So just in your, in your whole being, like with art, with gusto, just enter into the ceremony, enter into the sacrament with deep reverence, and people will be able to see that, and people will be, be able to, to want to know what it is that you have and they'll want that. So ultimately your wedding is an opportunity to really show your guests that you love them, to lead them to the love of the Lord, and then show this like beautiful unifying act with, between you and your future spouse. Yeah, I'm glad I married you. Wow, thank you, Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great day, July 22nd. 2022. Come on, July 2222. Two, two, two. If you've made it this far. <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> If you've made it this far in the video, um, thank you. And we would love to hear if you're Catholic, if you're getting ready for a wedding soon, what kind of things are you doing to help lead others into an authentic encounter with the Lord's love? And please give us a like, a comment, a subscribe. It helps us. It helps this video get in front of more engaged people's eyes. And as always, <laughs> be who you're meant to be. Go set the world on fire. St. Catherine of Siena. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good.